Hi everyone, it's Rachel. I am a host mom for au pairs. I make videos for host families and au pairs. Thank you for joining me today. If you are a potential host family and you do not have a friend or family member that has an au pair currently, I'm gonna list some referral links in the comment box down below, the description box rather. Please consider using them. If you have a friend or family member that's no pair that has no pair, you do not need to use them, but if you don't, don't let them go to waste. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about some updates. Um, you may notice that the background is a little different than when you saw me last, and I know it's been quite a moment since I posted, um, but we've had a little bit of a life change. We have actually moved again. Um, so I thought this would be a really good opportunity to talk about, can you move when you have an au pair? What do you need to consider when you move with an au pair? And um, the benefits of moving with an au pair. So if this is of interest to you, please stick around, uh, give this video a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing as it helps YouTube to play the videos more often. Since we've had children, we have moved three times. The first time we did not have an au pair and our daughter was somewhere between 18, 15 to 18 months old. And that's when we moved from Nashville to Denver. The second time we moved, we did have an au pair. And at that time we had two children. We had my son who was maybe six months old and we had my daughter who was about three, maybe, yeah, probably about three years old, maybe four. Uh, and from there we moved from Denver to Louisville and we did have an au pair. The last time we moved, this current time, we moved from Louisville to Southwest Florida. And again, we had an au pair. I will tell you that moving with children is never easy. It is always difficult, no matter your situation. But I will tell you that having an au pair while we moved has made a world of difference. I, if, if ever possible, I would not do it without an au pair again with small children. It has been that much of an improvement. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the logistics of moving and maybe you find yourself in a career field like ours. We both work in healthcare and because of training and taking positions out of school and taking uh, more senior positions, we've ended up moving around quite a bit as you can tell. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is transparency with your au pairs. And this starts as early as when you're interviewing the au pair candidates. If there is even a chance that you think you might potentially have to move in that one or two year timeline that they're going to be with you, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you just let them know. You be very honest and open and candid with them and say, listen, we don't have an immediate plan right now, or we anticipate that in six, 12, 18 months, we could potentially move. We don't know where it could be, or if you do have an idea where it might be, just loop them in. I have yet to find a candidate that has said, no way, I have no interest in moving. Most of the candidates actually seemed to feel, in my opinion, like it's a benefit. Like they get to experience this area of the country for a few months, and then they get to experience this area for the, a few months or longer. Um, and so most of the candidates are really receptive and are excited about the potential of moving. The other side of that is, is once you do have concrete plans, let's say you have an au pair that's already with you, make sure you tell them as soon as possible. The next piece of advice that I would give is always give your au pair a choice if they want to move. If you already have an au pair living with you and you know you're going to be moving, ask your au pair, ask them if they want to move. Make sure that they understand the situation they're going to be moving to. Make sure they understand what the area is like in terms of the state or the city or um, the province that you'll be living in. Make sure that they understand what your new schedule will be like in terms of work. Maybe you were working at a Monday through Friday job that was from eight to five, and now you're gonna be working at a job where you're gonna be doing 12 hour shifts or weekends or holidays or, or some other variation of that. Make sure that they have all the information that they can have to make an informed decision. So that way when they get to the new location, they're set up to be realistic about what the experience will be like. The next thing you need to consider if you're going to move and you either have an au pair or anticipate having an au pair and moving is make sure you communicate with your agency. 
Not every agency covers every territory in the country. For example, when we lived in Denver, one of the agencies that we consistently considered was Au Pair in America. When we moved from Denver to Louisville, they did not have coverage in Louisville, Kentucky. So had we gone with an au pair in Au Pair in America, we would have not been able to bring that au pair with us at that time. And that was something we considered because we knew it was a possibility when my husband finished his medical training that we could have to relocate. And that was a potential area that we had lightly discussed at the time. Um, and so we made sure that when choosing an au pair, even though it was months and months and months before, we made sure to use an agency and an au pair that would accommodate us to move to that location. Um, if not, then it kind of sets you up for some unique obstacles. First of all, I would consider that if you really are set on using that agency, maybe consider a creative payment method where you're not doing the payment in bulk or in block. Maybe you're choosing a payment method where you're only doing portions of the payment at a time that way you won't be on the hook and not get a refund. Typically, au pair agencies, I found, don't provide refunds. They'll give you a credit toward a next, another au pair, but if you're moving to an area that they don't cover, much good that's going to do you. So keep that in mind. Um, also, keep in mind that when you move, you know, when you move from one area of the country to another area of the country, housing accommodations are very drastically different. And for example, I can give you the example where we moved to Florida. When we lived in Louisville, we had a very generous house with a basement and, and guest rooms. When we moved to Florida, the vast majority of houses are three bedroom, maybe four bedroom, and two bath. So it's a very different housing structure. And do, are you going to have room for an au pair? Does your budget allow you to have an au pair in your new area? Because where we live now is a little bit more expensive than where we lived before. So keep all those factors in mind when you're considering moving with an au pair. The last thing I was going to talk about when you move with an au pair is consider your au pair's schedule during the moving process. What we typically do is we send our children and our au pair by plane to one of our parents' houses while we're packing up for the last few days and loading the truck. Um, and then once we have moved our trucks and we're at our new location and we at least have bedrooms set up that we can accommodate the children again, we have the au pair and the children meet us at our new location. But just keep in mind that during those times, it is not uncommon to lose track of how many hours the au pair is working. So make sure that you communicate with your au pair and say, listen, I know you're gonna be traveling and I know you're gonna be staying at you know, the grandparents' house for a few days and I know you're going to you know, have a different schedule. Please help me to help you stay within your timeline amounts. I don't want to accidentally make you work too much because I'm busy and distracted doing other things. So make sure you have a plan set up. Make sure that wherever they're staying, that they have clear guidelines and boundaries in place as to how many hours the au pair can work with the kids. Now, if the au pair is traveling with the children across the country, that counts as their time on duty. And you can have your au pair travel with your children. Um, I did talk to TSA and I spoke with the airlines that they were going to fly. I printed out a federal form that basically was an authorization form. They never asked for it at TSA or at the airport check-in, um, but they had it with them saying that our au pair was authorized to transport our children across state lines via this airline carrier and so on and so forth. So do a little uh, due diligence prior to the flight if you are going to go that route, um, but, but it definitely is a possibility. Same thing if you're gonna go out of town and go on vacation and you want your au pair to take the kids to stay at a family member's house or somewhere else. Um, but just know that's an option and just make sure you're protecting that au pair's time off, make sure that they have the proper accommodations um, where they're staying temporarily and when you get to your new residence. The other thing to tell you about is that just like when we move, it takes us a few months to create new relationships and understand the area. Just know it's gonna take your au pair some time too. It's gonna take them time to establish friendships and meet new people or other au pairs and help them do what you can to speed that process up. 
there are typically going to be not just the agency that you're with in the area, there might even be other agencies in the area. And we typically will reach out to the agency AD or LCC in our area, let them know that we're moving there and we have an au pair and see if they have a group that they can attend their meetings or if they have an email list or contact list that your au pair can reach out and try to start creating friendships even before they move. The last thing to tell you, I think I said last like three times, the last thing to tell you is that once you are in place, everybody's at the new home, your local consultant, your AD, your LCC will need to come to your new house and verify that the living situation that you've set up for your repair does meet federal guidelines. And that is simply that they have their own private room and that they have somewhere to put their clothes. Again, you do not have to have a specialized bathroom that is only dedicated for their use. They don't have to have a conforming bathroom in terms of what we think of in residential properties, but they do need their own room with a door <laughs> and somewhere to put their clothes. And the agency will come in and make sure that your new residence does meet those guidelines. Um, but just know that we've done it twice successfully with an au pair. Our au pairs have always loved the adventure. They're adventurous to some degree anyway, or they wouldn't be here. And they've always had a wonderful, successful time in their new location in terms of friends and school and activities and things like that. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. I love engaging with you all. I have had the opportunity to work with a few families now while they've gone through the match process and it is truly enjoyable. So please, please reach out if you have questions, comments, you know, if, if we can be of help in any way. Uh, and again, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that YouTube will share these videos more when people are searching for videos. And I hope you all have a blessed day. We'll see you next time.